Welcome back to part four of our live training session here with our GT500 Mustang. In this tutorial, we're gonna be focusing on dialing in our spark timing as well as our torque model, making sure we're not getting kind of massive torque errors and uh, just getting everything sorted out so we can make additional power. So we've essentially filled in our airflow model. We know that everything is valid there. We know that our fuel, fuel model is valid. So now we need to turn our attention to actually making the power out of the combination of parts we have here, which is found through the spark timing. So we're gonna go through a whole set of dyno pools here in our chassis dyno to figure out what kind of power we can make safely out of this built GT500. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Welcome back to our live training session here with our GT500 Mustang. This tutorial, we're gonna be focusing our attention on dialing in our spark timing, trying to make good horsepower and torque out of our engine and doing it in a safe manner. We don't want the engine to last for a handful of pulls, we want it to last for years on end. So we wanna calibrate this in a logical manner and we wanna go make sure that we are extracting a good amount of power out of the engine. We don't leave power on the table. So we're gonna find a nice compromise between um, having max power and the spark timing, trying to get that sorted out. Now we're also gonna have to deal with our torque table, making sure that that's gonna represent the torque level or the torque output for the engine and engine control module. Um, I was noticing, and we're gonna talk about this in a little bit here, IPC wheel torque errors during full throttle and even in some part throttle as I was driving and capturing the very last watt pool, um, I did notice that type of behavior. So chances are we're gonna to have to go in and dial some of those uh, torque values up in our torque table, torque and inverse table, so that we have uh, a little bit more accurate torque tracking based on what we have here. Sometimes you don't have to touch the torque tables on the GT500 because they are pretty good already right from Ford, but in this case, we have such a large difference in airflow and power potential out of the engine, we are making a lot more torque compared to the stock blower um, and stock engine configuration. So uh, just some things to note about that, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Let's talk about where we're at in terms of uh, the calibration process. So we've dialed in the airflow curve, the mass airflow curve. We've validated our fuel model. We know that that's all good. So at this point, we can turn our attention onto the spark timing and our torque tables. Let's go and look at our spark timing table real quick here because that's gonna be the primary focus of this tutorial. We go to engine and we move across here into spark, we're gonna be focusing our attention and dialing in our borderline table. Now the borderline knock table is gonna be where we source the spark timing from. We're essentially here in our load registration between 1.7 and 2.0. We can take a look back here at that watt pool one, that's that data log from the previous training tutorial. I have that open here right now, that's in our course folder. I'm taking a look here, we're finding that that spark timing was relatively low here, around four degrees of spark timing. Now, if we look here, we see that MBT was commanding about 27. Borderline was showing here about 4.2, which is actually interesting because if we take a look here, that's not actually what it was commanded in the table. There's likely a modifier on this, and I was mentioning this before. We've zeroed out our lambda correction. That's no longer going to be a factor, but the intake air, uh, the intake air temp compensation is probably going to be doing something here. Our air temperature was showing about 129, 130 degrees. So if we take a look down here, we're right around here. Now it's showing negative 25 to negative 50 degrees of timing. It could potentially take out. We're commanding eight in the table, but we're losing about another four through the air temp compensation. If we go in here to the multiplier, we can take a look a little bit, a little bit further here on the load. We're saying uh, five, 6,000 RPM here. We're multiplying by 0.14. If we use the calculator here real quick, and we start to run some numbers. Let's say it was negative 50, command it from the table here of negative 50 degrees in the base, but we're multiplying it by 0 0.14. We're finding that we'd be taking out approximately seven degrees. So depending on where it's sourcing exactly, it's actually interpolating between uh, the value here of negative 25 to negative 50. We're somewhere in here, let's say negative 30. Run it through the calculator again. So we'll say negative 30 multiplied by 0 0.14. That was the value, the multiplier value at the RPM and load range. Negative 4.2, so that's exactly what we're finding here. So we have the air temp compensation starting to pull some timing out to avoid knock a pre-ignition on this particular vehicle. What I'm gonna do is tweak this a little bit in the IAT base. I'm gonna say here at negative uh, 125 air temp, I'm gonna say zero degrees. So between 100 and 125, we're gonna zero that out. Let's call that the normal operating range. So automatically we're gonna gain back four degrees of timing. Here at 150, I'm gonna say pull out, let's say something like negative negative 25 degrees, that should be good. And if we get up to 200 or higher, 100, 100 degrees of timing, 150 degrees, 
multi using the multiplier will have a high ignition retard. So what this is doing is not pulling out the timing as aggressively in the normal air temp operation range that this blower is actually seeing. We are on ethanol, so that's another factor here that uh, we don't have to worry about the air temperature as much, but we're finding that we should gain back some of that timing from right in that location. So we're gonna go in here for the first pool here, and we're gonna go and bump in a little bit more timing. So we were at four degrees, we're essentially gonna gain back four degrees here this first pool. Let's go and add another, let's say two degrees right here. So we're gonna add another six degrees total. We should be at roughly 10 degrees of timing under wide open throttle now, and we should see a substantial jump in our power output. Okay, so that's where we're at for our spark timing. A couple other factors here. Let's jump to airflow. Now, we can see in the airflow versus voltage curve, we've dialed this in. We know that this is gonna be valid. It's gonna be accurate. We know that we were tracking right to the command EQ or command lambda. So our actual lambda the command, we're pretty much laying on top of each other. I went in here. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.